Hello everybody. Welcome back to how to build a B1 bomber. Ten minutes at a time. <laughs> Hope y'all like this new format. We kind of changed it up a little. Just trying to get you a better view. You know, now that I think about it, I should have turned that wing around the other way. I just thought it'd be better to do it that way. But you know, I'm gonna back my camera up and try to zoom in. I'm gonna be spraying. I'm fixing to be spraying people. Okay, what I got here. This is my mold release. This is a part all mold release. Get this at Associated Industries. What this is it's like a film. It's a water base, and you gotta spray it on super thin. You old timers know this. You newcomers need to watch this. You got to spray it on super thin. Because remember, I just put a bunch of wax on that wing. If I spray it on heavy, it's going to fish eye. It'll fish eye all over and you got to wash it off with a sponge. And we ain't got time for that today. So you use a lot of air pressure and just put a couple light coats on it. Let it dry completely. And uh, that's all you need. Don't take much. But I... Keep it in just one of these little touch-up guns. This is my part-all gun right here. This is all I use this gun for. I got primer guns. Oh, I'm plug that in. I got primer guns. I got paint guns, and I got part-all guns. I keep them all separate. Okay, watch your foot there. Get this quarter out. Uh, Put a little cast on the bench. I want a wide pattern and uh, a lot of air. That's sprayed off. Make sure there ain't no dust floated on it. coat on it it kind of activates the other coat and you get it you know a couple three light coats like that and they all just blend together and lays down so flat and it ends up being like a a coat of like you know like your saran wrap uh, you know it's, it's, it's kind of weird stuff but we sure like it here at the shop I got my resin all ready to go I take it, this is my, that white with resin, okay, this is what I'm going to use for like a gel coat, it's an epoxy base, they just call it white resin down there at the, at the associated, but there I'll zoom in on the number, AL2103, and uh, 2103 hardener, right there. Man, look at the zoom on that camera. 2103 hardener. Okay, that's a 16 to 100 mix. I'm going to take up my scale and I'm going to put use, you know, uh, weight in 100 gram interim increments. I'll get 100 or say 200 grams of resin and then put like 32 grams of hardener in it for 16 parts for every 100. But a hundred ain't really enough to go nowhere. I'll need to mix that up at like a two hundred at a time. 
But I'm going to let that dry for a minute. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm going to tell you all the story. Okay. Uh, in my working career, I was a tile man. All right. And uh, I was going to a tile job here in Wichita. And uh, I knocked on this old boy's door. He was having his kitchen tiled. You know, we just went to one of them companies, you know, they sub out to work and, you know, me and this guy's never met. And I go knocking on his door, and this tall man answered, older gentleman. And uh, as soon as he started talking, I knew he was German, man. He had that real heavy German accent. I told him who I was. He said, come on in. Right away, started seeing all this memorabilia on the wall. You know, old Luftwaffe stuff. And, uh... You know, I stayed there to work that day. Actually, it took me about three days to do a one-day job because I was sitting out there talking to Horace so much. His name was Horace Petzler. And he was an actual Luftwaffe pilot all the way through the war. You know, and oh, Horace, the horse was a good, you know, I like the horse. He's a good man, you know. I ain't going to get involved in any kind of politics. But that horse was a good man, I tell you. The longer I sat there and talked to that old boy, the bigger my sack of stuff was when I left. Let me get something right quick, I'll show you. Oh, Horace wrote this book, Day Fighters. He actually uh, wrote Night Fighters too, but he flew a ME-109, and he flew Folkwolfs. He gave me a picture of him when he was a young man. And uh, he put one of these seals in this book. Uh, you know, this is separate from the book. This was made by Horace himself. Man, what a nice guy. He just sat there and told me war stories. And, you know, to Bob, good luck and good health and all. The... Your friend Horst. <laughs> Couldn't read that last word there. Oh, what a nice guy. I really enjoyed talking to Horst. That was probably back in about, I'm going to say 95. You know, and I, I went and did one more job for him. And uh, a couple, three years after that, and we sat and visited. And you know, I haven't been over to see Horst. Always was, you know... Just one of them things, you know, raising a family, just, uh, I don't know, but man, I'll never forget them days. And see that beer bottle up there? Okay. There it is, way up there. Me and Horst shared a beer. That is a German beer imported. And we sat down, we shared a beer, and I kept that bottle, and I still got it to this day. That really meant a lot to me. I like the old Horst. You guys want to get on the pooter? But he actually had a bunch of his gun footage, original gun footage that he had on, converted onto VCR tape. No, yeah, he gave me a copy. But mainly he was over, you know, fought the Russians, but he told me all about it, you know. But he made it all the way through the war from the start to the end. And uh, told me how he got captured finally. He went to Switzerland first and they turned him over to the Russians and then all he went through and you know uh, he couldn't help but feel for the guy but then he after it was all over Harry Truman saved him saved them all and uh, ended up working for Boeing <laughs> and moved here to Wichita Kansas and I got to meet him and that was one of the best moments in my life but I sure liked old Horst he was a good man but as soon as you walked in his house man you knew right away he was German, man, had all this stuff on his wall. You know, he did. He don't really, he's not an activist, nothing like that, don't get me wrong. He's just uh, memorabilia from when he was a young man. You know, we all remember them days. And you uh, can't blame a horse for that. He don't hold no grudges. He's got a bunch of buddies uh, on all sides, you know. And uh, they get together and have these book signing parties and, that's one of my good stories, people. I got some more for you. I might let you have another one a little later. But uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to put another coat of this on this and get it ready for some resin. 
and I'll be back in a bit.